six, a helping hand with your land. Hey guys, Neil from Essex. I'm out doing some work, actually personal work, uh, with my tractor and our Artillion Grapple. I'm going to show you a little bit about some of the things that I've been working on, tell you a little bit about the Grapple, some of the things I like about it, some of the things I think would be configured a little bit differently. Uh, educate you a little bit on this piece, which I think is really, really cool. Um, have a conversation about it. We can talk through some Grapple features, functions, things that you want to look for in a Grapple show you a couple of the ways that I've been using it. If you're not familiar with Artillion, it's what I would describe as uh, a premium grapple. My impression is this is probably the most innovative product on the market right now as far as a grapple goes. This is a lot more than just a grapple, it's more of a grapple system. So you'll notice here what you have on the tractor is essentially a pallet fork frame with varying modules that can go on the frame depending on the task that you're going to do. You'll see here I have a double lid grapple out on the front. These each are an individual module. So what you're looking at here is a left and a right grapple module. Same part number coming from Artillion. They come in nice cardboard boxes, beautifully packaged. And when I say this stuff is kind of like the premium end of the market right now when you start touching and feeling these things you can really see why when you look at say something as simple as the hydraulic hoses you know the hoses are well made with rubber booted ends and cloth fabric with bungee straps that they send along with carabiners to strap the hoses down to your your loader really well thought through stuff um, the engineering of these things is all really thought out all laser cut powder coated it's beautifully done stuff I've been out here um, cleaning some wooded area, picking up brush and throwing things into the burn pile back here behind me. And so I have my two modules in one of two configurations while I've been out here working. And I actually stopped at times and changed these, which is something I wasn't totally expecting. It wasn't just a set it and forget it. Um, when I first came out and started, I had my two grapple modules spread the whole way apart. Recently here, I was using them pushed back together like this. And because of this pallet fork frame backing, it gives you that flexibility in order to be able to do that. So I had a couple of first impressions when I first saw this grapple that after I got out and used it a bit, kind of started to quickly change. The, there's a unique system here that allows you to drop these things onto the fork frame and lock them in place. And it's these little keys. I don't know how quite to <laughs> describe the shape of these things, but they're pretty unique. Uh, when you move the modules back and forth here, you slide the grapples back and forth on the pallet fork frame, and you put them halfway between the notches you would normally use with a pallet fork itself. Once you do that, there's a hole in the back of the attachment that's going to line up with the notch in the fork frame. And very simply, what you do is take the little key, stick it in the back of the, the attachment through the hole, and then allow it to rotate itself 180 degrees down. And when you do that, that simply locks the piece in place. It, when you look at it the first time, you would look at that and think it doesn't look very secure. But I've yet to have one of these things pop out of place. The magic of why it kind of seems to work is the weight of this part right here. These are all solid metal. And you can feel that this end, this heavy end, is kind of always pulled down by gravity. And so that's going to hold those little keys in place and make sure they don't pop out and allow your modules to move. So as I explained, I've been out here picking up brush and dumping it onto a fire. So I chose to run this with as little as possible on the underside and the floor of the grapple. The floor is always going to be considered kind of that bottom part. There's a lot of different styles of grapples or buckets that are constructed in different ways and the way that floor is put together. This has fairly wide tine spacing that's going to let dirt and that kind of stuff drop out the bottom. It's good for brush and big sticks and that kind of thing, but may not be the best if you want to say like try to sift through dirt and pull out the rocks, right? There's big openings in the bottom that are going to allow that stuff to drop through. If I want more of that, I can install a floor module. Or if I decide I don't want double grapples up on here, I want to save some money on this whole setup and only buy one, I can drop that in the middle and then put floors on the outside. So I'm going to show you how that works. So I've got two hydraulic hoses coming back here on the top of the grapple module. Just your regular Pioneer couplers. I'm going to pop those off, put the dust covers over top of them. And wrap this around over here and then in order to remove this I can just grab the lid and cheat this right off the end just like you would a pallet fork and remove the entire grapple module 
from the grapple. Now I'm over here in the bed of my RTV, got some additional artillion attachments. So this is a floor. So I can bring this over, slide that on, and then just like a pallet fork, be able to move back and forth my different modules in order to build this out in different ways. So there's a floor. Here's another. And you can see by simply bringing these things on and off, you know, you can kind of look at the application that you have in hand and kind of decide what the best way is to carry something, right? I don't know why exactly you'd put it together like this, but it's cool that you can, right? Like innovative stuff in using this pallet fork frame to lay these things out in different ways. Now if I can nitpick a little bit, we look here at the grab the module itself. The uh, I have some personal feelings about how certain products now are designed. Um, if you look at this piece here, love the powder coating on it. It's held up really well. Despite all my tearing around out here, I haven't chipped any of it off anywhere like that. That's great. Uh, the teeth here in the front for gripping things and grabbing are cool. Don't have a problem with that. The one thing that is a maybe a pet peeve of mine. Um, great in that this thing is light. This is probably 15 pounds at the most for that center module. Part of how they achieve that is by going around and drilling, laser cutting holes in these things. Those holes, they remove those pieces then in order to try to save some weight on the attachment. When you look around the grapple, you'll see a lot of that. And a lot of tractors, I don't see the need for that so much. The one thing that annoys me a little bit when you have a grapple that has all these holes in it, uh, small brush and that kind of stuff, it just gives it more place to grab a hold of, right? When you're trying to dump brush and get out of the pile, it's more th places for a, a twig or something to get a hold of and not want to release and, and dump your load very well. So these things are done for weight savings. I my impression always has been, I think if you went around and you looked at the amount of weight you save by punching holes all over the place is probably what? Two pounds, three pounds in the module like this. My opinion, I probably would choose to have those filled in, um, have the additional strength, take the little bit of a weight penalty. Um, but that's me. That's, that's kind of how I look at it. On smaller tractors, particularly if you're going to get down to subcompacts and that kind of stuff, this starts to become a little bit bigger of an issue. But on my B-Series, I don't see the point. But it is cool in that this is a very lightweight module, right? And every pound that you don't put on this implement is another pound that you can lift. So in the end, that is a positive. So where this starts to get even more interesting is the other attachments that Artillion is making to go onto the fork frame. This right here is a little stump bucket. Uh, you'll see these things used in order to try to wedge or pry stumps or rocks and that kind of stuff out of the ground. I've also seen some people do a little bit of light trenching with it, believe it or not. And the, the absence of a backhoe, uh, this little narrow bucket can be used to dig out a shallow trench. Now you're not gonna go far. You're not gonna get much more than, you know, eight, 10 inches or something like that but it's a really inexpensive way to kind of give you another tool that's going to go out on the front of the tractor. And so you can see what I did right there is take literally a minute to remove my grapple modules, drop the stump bucket on the front, and now there's a different chore I can go do. So I've never done this before. I mean, you can tell the thing's clean, right? I can't see super well what I'm doing. If I had any complaint about this thing, that would probably be my principal complaint. Just like that, if you needed to go and... Work yourself through digging a shallow trench, it certainly beats a shovel, right?
this tiny bucket, you're certainly not going to set any land speed records, right? But you can get the concept of how it works. Sure is going to beat a shovel. The other thing I think you can probably do well with this too is if you're going to like plant bushes or that kind of thing, right? Again, kind of going back to that shovel idea again, the shape of it is just about right. But if you kind of want to go like this and stab it down into the ground, or roll your bucket back and forth to try to penetrate a little bit. Instead of going that trenching route, you could probably just very simply dig a hole, right? I'll dig a hole with my uh, tractor with this silly little bucket on the front any day before having to go get a shovel. <laughs> so granted, a little silly, limited applications, right? But if you have that, say, little drainage line you're gonna put in your backyard, you got some landscaping work to do, it gives you an option to be able to move dirt with something other than a five foot wide loader bucket, right? Um, also make a decent carry all too. You go back to that landscaping thing, you go scoop up a tree, move it around, you know, the nice sides and stuff are kinda of gonna contain that. The little chain hook thing on the inside and the absence of anywhere else to be able to attach things, it's got its purpose. For 275 bucks, which is the pricing for it today, it's not a horribly expensive thing to have around that gives this system a little bit more functionality. This though is not the end of this. Uh, we'll pop this guy off here, grab the pallet forks out, and show you what they look like. And lastly, of course, on a pallet fork frame, you're gonna have pallet forks, right? Artillery's got a whole bunch of different options for exactly what type of fork you'd use. Uh, you got options for weight capacities and length. All of this stuff impressively is load rated. When you look around here, these are good load rated forks. You've got a load rated back carriage here that actually has the load capacity stamped into it. That's a little different in a world of particularly uh, imported overseas power forks and that kind of stuff where you often don't find a whole lot of, say, guarantees on the capacities of what you're buying. This back frame here is another optional piece. If you're gonna be lifting things, it's generally called a brick guard on a set of pallet forks. If you're gonna be lifting things that you have the potential of spilling off the back, especially when you're rolling things back. You'll hear guys fairly frequently that are using pallet forks, dumping things back onto their tractor. This little add-on piece here can hook onto the sides of the pallet fork frame and catch anything that might come off the back of your load. One really cool thing on this pallet fork frame that I've never seen on anything before, and to this point, I feel like works pretty well, is there's actually a coating that's put on the back of the sliding surface here. It's kind of a, a permanent paint on graphite, and that helps keep this lubricated. And you can actually tell, when you run your fingers back and forth across here, you can feel it, and it has a little bit of a slick surface to it. That makes sure that these forks and the different modules that you're gonna put on here can slide back and forth across the frame easily. Now, good chance after this thing wears a little bit, if this surface wears off, most other forks and systems like this, you're gonna use a little bit of grease on in order to keep those things moving smoothly that may become necessarily down the road, I'll tell you, as I use this thing more and kind of get some more wear and tear and dirt on it. Um, but to this point, I, you know, they, they call that out as a feature and I, I can see it. It seems to be a pretty legit thing. So that's a little bit on the Artillian grapple system. The pieces that I've got out here today for the grapple, the floor, the stump bucket, the forks, there's a snow plow that they make for this thing too. I love the approach that this company is taking towards accessories and implements for compact tractors. When you go across the line and you look at what these guys are doing, there's a definite slant towards uh, quality, high-end, well-engineered, versatile products. I mean, simple things like seeing, you know, hose covers, dust caps, uh, bungee cords to secure your hoses. That kind of stuff is an approach that you don't see other companies in this industry 
taking. It, it All too often anymore when you get into this kind of like power fork grapple stuff, there's so much, you know, imported stuff and everybody with a weld shop seems to be cranking this kind of stuff out. I, I just appreciate seeing the approach that these guys are taking towards, you know, staying above that and making a real quality product. So that's where this brand is really positioned. And that's coming from somebody who sells five or six different lines of grapples and attachments and that kind of stuff. These guys know what they're doing and you can see the quality and the approach that they've taken here very clearly. So if you're interested in this piece, we're glad to help. Uh, we're a retailer for these guys and we can drop ship their products anywhere in the country. We're glad to help you out. We're available at 800-222-3373 or you can check us out at messix.com.